Hey friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. It's my favorite part of the day. It is late afternoon, I'm done with all my work, so now we get to have fun in the kitchen together. We are gonna be making some dinner. I have been wanting to make, since we went grocery shopping together, chicken tetrazzini. So I bought all the ingredients we need in order to do that. So here's our chicken. Normally I would use chicken breast for this recipe, or canned chicken, but I thought out some chicken thighs. They need to be used up, so we're gonna use those today. And then, I think the only other thing we need are mushrooms, and I need to decide what vegetable we're gonna to cook today. Maybe we will have roasted broccoli with tonight's dinner. And I did go downstairs and did a little grocery shopping. I got two onions, some garlic, a pound of pasta, and a little bit of white wine. So let's get going on dinner. I'm gonna take my chicken thighs, I'm gonna cut off any excess fat, and then I'm going to dice up these chicken thighs into just dices. Once we get dinner on the stove and cooking, I have a few preservation projects that I need to button up that we started together the other day. We also went to Target and did some shopping for one of our guest bathrooms and we're gonna go ahead and decorate that guest bathroom once we have all of dinner prepped, ready to go. We can have fun doing that while we wait for dinner to cook. It's been a while since I've made this recipe, so I did have to print off the recipe to remind myself how to make it. We need to pre-cook our pasta. So I'm gonna get this on to boil and we're gonna start our sauce and our chicken over here. I'm gonna go ahead and salt this water with the pasta. And then here, we're gonna put some olive oil in the bottom of our pan, along with some butter. And this is gonna be the base of our sauce that we are going to cook our chicken in this oil and butter. While our pasta water comes to a boil and our chicken cooks, we're going to prep some of the other ingredients we need. I did myself a favor and I bought three sliced mushrooms that are already washed so we don't have to wash and slice our mushrooms, which is awesome. And I'm gonna season our chicken now. It's about halfway cooked and we're gonna season it with pepper as well. We want to flavor every step of the way. And I actually have to look at my recipe because it's been so long since we've made this. I actually need a few more tablespoons of butter in here because we're going to make a white sauce with the butter and flour. We're going to make a roux. So I'm going to add a few more tablespoons of butter. Our water is almost boiling. Chicken tetrazzini is a baked pasta dish. So when I make pasta to then that I'm going to then put in the oven, I always like to air on the side of al dente. So the package on these noodles said to cook for 11 minutes, so we'll probably cook them for about nine, just so that we don't overcook our pasta. Our chicken is cooked fully through, so I'm gonna add our onions, and we're gonna cook our onions until tender. Since we have our pasta going, we're gonna go ahead and get going on our vegetable. I think we're just going to do roasted broccoli because that's so easy. Because we can have it cooking in the oven and roasting in the oven while we bake our pasta at the same time. I think I'm going to do about half of this bag of broccoli. Some of the broccoli florets are a little bit on the big side so I'm going to take just a second to trim them down and make them a little bit more manageable and kind of have all the broccoli about the same size so that it all roasts in the oven evenly. And so we don't have some that are way overcooked and some that are undercooked. So now we have our pasta that's done. We're gonna let that sit there. We're gonna season this broccoli really simply. I have our garlic infused olive oil that has delicious garlic flavor. 
So we're going to go ahead and put some of that on our broccoli because I have yet to powder up the garlic that we freeze dried. Maybe we'll get to that today. That's probably something that I should do today. Salt and a good amount of black pepper. Our chicken is almost ready for the next step. We need to put the mushrooms in there. The first time I ever had roasted broccoli, I was in college. We always had steamed broccoli growing up, a lot of times with cheese on it. And broccoli and cheese is like a, ma a match made in heaven. I love that. But I remember having roasted broccoli with a lot of garlic flavor on it. It was life changing. Now I roast all the vegetables, garlic, Brussels sprouts, uh, you name it, <laughs> asparagus, cabbage, cauliflower. It just adds such a depth of flavor that you don't get when you steam your vegetables. Broccoli is probably one of my favorite vegetables. We just don't eat it that much during the summer because I don't really grow it. All right, so I'm gonna massage this broccoli really well. Let me rinse my hands and we'll get the mushrooms in our chicken tetrazzini. You can see we're getting some good browning. Oh, a little too much browning. So we're gonna use the mushrooms to get up all that browning from the bottom of the pan. I just turned the stove down a little bit because I don't want that to get any darker. We need the moisture from the mushrooms to scrape up all those brown bits. I'm gonna take this off the heat actually. Don't want that fawn or fond at the bottom of that pan to burn. I'm gonna let the moisture in the mushrooms come out so that we can scrape the bottom of the pan. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt that will help draw out that moisture. Chicken tetrazzini kind of reminds me of a white sauce version of stroganoff because it's a cream sauce with chicken and mushrooms instead of kind of a cream sauce with mushrooms and beef. And it has white wine in it instead of red wine. So now you can see how the little bit of moisture that's come out of those mushrooms is allowing me to scrape up those brown bits. That's just delicious flavor, but we almost burnt that, so we saved it. What we did there was we deglazed the bottom of the pan, and you can do that process with vegetables or chicken broth, white wine. You can deglaze the pan with anything that has liquid in it and it will help pick up all those yummy brown bits. That's just, we're developing and layering the flavor of our dish. So I've turned the heat back on and I'm gonna pepper the mushrooms. We wanna make sure we season every layer. We're gonna let these brown up, cook down, and then we'll add our garlic. The other day we started the freeze dryer with some Parmesan cheese, parsley, and cilantro. We need the parsley for today's recipe. So I thought, let's go ahead and get these packaged up. So the last thing we wanna do is waste any of that Parmesan cheese. So I'm gonna put a piece of parchment paper down so that if anything falls, we can pick it up with the parchment paper. Ooh, see, that's why I wanted that paper down. Oh goodness. This is the real deal Parmesan cheese from Italy and I love having this in my house, but this stuff is an investment. And so I have found that having it freeze dried means that I can keep it and I don't have to worry about it going bad. I do keep some fresh in my fridge, but I use this freeze dried Parmesan cheese just like you would any Parmesan cheese that comes in the, sh in the green shaky can. But this stuff is incredible. Incredible! It has the best flavor. I think I can get all of this to fit in here. I don't want to waste any of it. To store this, all I'm going to do is put a reused canning jar lid on it. And there we go. We have shelf-stable Parmesan cheese. Now we're going to dish up. Now we're going to package up our cilantro. This is my new favorite freeze-dried item. It's so much better than dehydrated. I will always have this on hand from now on. So we're just gonna put this in the same mason jar we had the last batch in. Put a lid on it and now we have shelf stable cilantro that tastes 
way better than any dehydrated cilantro you can buy. Last but not least, I did freeze dry just a little bit of parsley and we're gonna use some of this in tonight's dinner. And I left these leaves whole because I kind of wanted to try to see if I like them whole or if I like to dice them up before I put them in the freeze dryer. I don't think it really matters. So I'm going to try to clean up as I go. So we're going to get our freeze dryer trays in the dishwasher. If I can get them to fit. Perfect. So we're getting some beautiful color on these mushrooms and the chicken. It's browning up so, so nicely. So now we're going to add our garlic and let that cook for about a minute. So to be honest, I walked away and I almost burnt this. You can see how dark we didn't burn it, but we were super close. So I'm glad I came back when I did. Now we're gonna make our sauce. I'm gonna add some flour. We're gonna let that cook for about two minutes, cook that flour flavor out. The color on this is divine. That is just pure flavor, that browning, yum. So now we've let that flour cook. We're gonna add some white wine. You can see that as you continue to make the sauce, things keep sticking to the bottom, and that's okay because we're gonna continue to add liquid where we can pull that flavor up off the bottom of the pan. So that is some chicken broth. We're gonna use that chicken broth to deglaze the pan. So I'm gonna let the chicken broth and wine cook together for a minute and get that alcohol cooked out of the wine. Now we're gonna add our dairy products, which is whole milk. And some heavy cream. We're gonna let that thicken up, and that is our sauce. I'm gonna go ahead and add the parsley now. This is the freeze-dried parsley I just took out of the freeze dryer. I was just thinking that I don't have any breakfast for Josh. So I better get him some breakfast made up. I think I'm just gonna make a baked oatmeal. Super, super easy. So we're gonna get that whipped up since we're gonna have the oven going. I might as well have something else in the oven. I'm just putting, oh, I need the milk for the baked oatmeal. We're just gonna make it right in the pan. We're just gonna make a nine by nine because that's really easy. We canned up these peaches together just for this purpose. So we're gonna make a peach strawberry baked oatmeal today. I'm going to add about five eggs. I don't really follow a recipe. I've made this so much that I kind of just go by whatever I have on hand. I did sweeten these peaches so that the baked oatmeal would have a little bit of sweetness to it. But last time I made these peaches and I didn't add any extra sugar, Josh said they weren't, it wasn't quite sweet enough. So we will add a little bit more sweetener. So to this, I'll add about a quarter cup of sugar, four cups of oats, maybe three and a half cups. That looks pretty good. No, we'll do four. Some vanilla, some cinnamon, pinch of salt, and then we're gonna mix this up. And when I mix this up, I will add a little bit of milk to it. I like to make this just in the pan I'm gonna bake it in so that I don't make another dish dirty. I can tell it's a little bit dry, so I just add milk until it looks like the moisture level I want it to be. So this is about the texture or runniness I like. And to make this peach strawberry, we're gonna add a little bit of peach jam to it. All I do is take some of my strawberry jam. Did I say peach jam? Now I can't remember. This is strawberry jam. And I'm just gonna dot it on the top, maybe a quarter of a cup or so. And then I take my spoon that was already mixed in with the eggs and I just kind of mix that in just a little bit. And there we have it, peach strawberry baked oatmeal that I am going to put into the oven in just a second. But what I wanna do before I do that is I wanna taste test our sauce before we put our noodles in because it's gonna be easier to adjust the seasonings on the sauce if we do it now before we mix all the pasta in with it. That is so good, but it does need just a little bit more salt and pepper. Never ever be afraid to taste test your food 
So you can adjust the seasonings before you finish it and you can make sure that it tastes as good as it can. Now we're gonna taste it again. I'm gonna grab a new spoon. My goal when I'm cooking is to try to have everything taste perfect. Not perfect, I, I'm not a perfect cook, that's not what I mean. But I want it seasoned well. I know everyone's seasoning level is different, but I don't want people to feel the need to salt and pepper food that I make. I, I try, that's my goal, to have it the right salt level and the right pepper level before it ever gets to the table. Oh, that was it. And sometimes I do make things a little too salty and sometimes I under season, but that's just life and that's cooking and you just learn from it and you move on. Actually, last time I made the peach oatmeal, I oversalted it and Josh said it, I didn't put enough sweetener and I, he's like, did you mix up the sugar and the salt? He ate it just fine, he was a trooper, but I felt a little bad because things like that you obviously can't taste before you bake it. And I knew I had dumped a little bit too much salt in there and I, <laughs> I dumped it on the peaches so I took some of the peaches and I rinsed them off, but clearly I didn't rinse enough of them off. All right, so we have our sauce and we're gonna put our noodles into our sauce. It's always easier if you put your noodles into your sauce because then this pot is easier to clean. Then you only have one that's really saucy or that is the goal, but I just dumped this pot into there. So I'm gonna have to clean that and that's okay. So now I'm gonna get the noodles mixed into the sauce. This might just take me just a second. You could eat it just like this, but we are going to bake this and this is gonna be a baked pasta dish. This looks so good. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna get all the yummy sauce out of our Dutch oven. I'm gonna spread this out evenly in a nine by 13 baking dish. Now this recipe calls for breadcrumbs. I don't have breadcrumbs right now, but I do have some leftover crackers from this weekend. So I'm going to put some of these crackers in this Ziploc bag. We're gonna crush them up we're gonna use these on top instead of breadcrumbs. Now we have all the components done for dinner plus Josh's breakfast, so we just have to put them in the oven. I have enough food between what I just prepped here and what I've already made in the refrigerator to last us for the next few days, so I won't have to do any cooking which is awesome because that'll give me about two, it'll actually give me three days where I don't have to do any cooking and then we are gonna be doing a huge Thanksgiving prep because I am responsible for quite a few Thanksgiving side items, desserts and appetizers for this coming weekend. So it'll be nice to have a break in the kitchen before we have that big cooking day. Being in the kitchen is one of my absolute favorite places to be. I love coming in here and creating and making delicious things. Sometimes they turn out, sometimes they don't. But what's really nice is when I prep enough and then I can have a day or two or three where then I don't have to be in the kitchen. And it just kind of gets me excited to be back in the kitchen and get creative again when I allow myself having those breaks. It's kind of just like a mental reset for me. Now that we have dinner in the oven, the kitchen's clean, Breakfast is in this oven, the dishwasher's going, we get to go play in the bathroom and start decorating it. I have this glass jar here. We're gonna use this as part of our decoration. And I'll show you, you probably already saw what I got, but I am excited to get this stuff put up into the bathroom. So before we start doing any of the really fun things, I need to caulk around the bathtub. You may not remember, but I took all the really old gross caulking that was kind of mildewy off around the bathtub. So I need to replace it so that water doesn't go between the bathtub and the tile work. It feels good to get this project done. You know how sometimes we just have those little things on our list that take five minutes to do, but it takes us a month to get to it? So that's kind of what I feel like with this project. It, this is gonna take me minutes to do, 
but it took me way too long to finally get to it. Oh my goodness, this looks so much better already. This is not something you really want to put off either because you really don't want water getting in between your tub and your tile work. So I just put a little bead worth of caulking and I take my finger and I smooth it out nicely. Make sure it looks nice. And that looks so much better than that mildewy caulk. Nice, clean, and white. if you know if the caulking around your bathtub is mildewy looking just scrape it up and replace it and it makes it look so much better you do want to take the time to make sure that you smooth it out that there's no gaps that it looks neat I'm telling you it's amazing how something so little can make such a big difference with how something looks one of Josh and I's goals in this house is to try not to put off these little projects. I mean, we'll never, you're never going to be totally done, but we want this house to feel like a home and we kind of are committed to each other that, you know, when you go to sell a house, you do all those little things like you might do this, replace the caulking around the bathtub because it's mildewy and it looks bad. You know, it's not going to hurt anything, but you want to make it look very presentable for the next person that is going to possibly buy your home. We are trying, we'll never be perfect at it, but it's something that we're working towards is being committed to each other to try to do these little things so that while we're here, we can feel blessed and comfortable and it can feel clean and like a nice home. So we've got a long way to go, but that is something that we, it's a goal to keep in mind which at least we have the goal because then there's a chance that, you know, we might be able to, even if we hit 50% of it or 90% of it, then we are doing better than if we didn't have that goal altogether. So I can smell the broccoli and it is now done. It is nice and roasty and toasty. You can see it's got a nice browniness to it. And our chicken tetrazzini is done too. So we're gonna, you can see how it's nice and bubbly and ooey and gooey and delicious. This did not take near as long to bake as I thought it was going to. So I'm going to leave the pasta in the oven with the oven off just so that it doesn't cook anymore. I'll take the broccoli out, but I want it to, the pasta to stay warm while we wait for Josh to get home. We got the caulking done in here. Now we need to put the shower curtain up. Now I bought two shower curtains because I'm not totally sure how many shower curtains it's going to take to go around that big, I don't even know what that's called, the loop for the shower curtain. So I bought two just in case I needed two, and then if I need to return one, I can definitely do that. We bought these together, if you were with me, we went to Target and we went shopping and it was a lot of fun. I just went with a really plain white shower curtain. I wanted the green on the walls to really stand out in this room. And then I didn't buy any hooks while I was there because the previous owners left these hooks here so I didn't have to buy any hooks. And these are perfect because they match the, they're the shiny, what is that, chrome color? I don't know. It's late, friends. Let's see if I can figure out how to use these hooks. And then I did also buy just a uh, white, what is this, the like liner part. This is, I did go with like a cloth one, so it's not just like super plasticky. I have some people staying at our house when we're having Friendsgiving. Some friends are coming in from out of town, and that's one of the reasons why I really had to get going on this project, because I need a place for them to be able to take a shower. I know you guys are going to get mad at me for standing on the bathtub, but I'll be okay. I'm 
maybe should have washed the shower curtain first to get the wrinkles out, but I guess we're just doing a proof of concept today to see how well this looks. And then I can wash it. I don't know if you can hear the rain. It is pouring cats and dogs out there right now. I'm gonna go ahead and put the second shower curtain on and I'm having some feelings about this. I will walk you through or talk you through all my feelings once I have this up all the way. And then I definitely want your <laughs> opinion on what you think because you guys help me so much and I definitely need your input on this decision. And these shower curtains definitely need to be thrown in the dryer at least to get these wrinkles off. But we are going to get them up there before we do anything like that in case we want to return them. Oh, I almost put this on backwards. That would have been very disappointing if I got all the way through this whole thing and I realized I put it on backwards. with right now so I do have two shower curtains the split is right here and obviously they need to be unwrinkled but I thought that it looks better going in the tub as opposed to them coming out of the tub because the shower curtain doesn't go to the floor and that obviously looks really weird like that so I think it looks better with the shower curtain tucked inside I want you all to give me your opinion on that as well. I'm keeping all of the cardboard so that I can return any of these shower curtains if needed. I kind of want to stage this area back here too. And I thought it might be nice if we brought in some natural elements. This is one of those placemats I just bought. I would not use this in here. I would go buy maybe something like this and put it in here. But this is kind of proof of concept that I think having like a natural material in here looks nice. And then I have these really cool <laughs> jars and I want to make some homemade Epsom salts for the bath. And I thought that that would be kind of pretty to have like a little sitting thing here with your Epsom salts and a cute little spoon. So this is just me thinking out loud. So if you guys have any suggestions, I greatly appreciate it. And then maybe putting some candles, maybe candles on a basket thing is not the best idea, but I definitely am someone who enjoys candles and these are beeswax candles and they smell so good. I don't burn these on the daily. These are something I like to burn like if I'm in the tub because they're one expensive. Well, that's why, because they're expensive <laughs> and they smell so good, but I like to have candles burning in my house all the time. So that, I don't know. What do you think of that? I like the concept of having the jar with the some sort of natural material underneath, but this needs a little bit more working. And the last thing I bought for this bathroom is this plate, uh, place mat, this bath mat. It's white, it's a little bit feminine, and I think it's pretty. Oh, you can't even see it. But I'm not sure how it fits in this room. I'm liking this. It's not perfect, but we're getting somewhere with that idea. I think the natural is definitely the material, the natural material is the way to go. If you want the overview of this bathroom, again, here it is. They have this really big, beautiful window, which we still need to buy a blind for. It has the wainscoting in here. And then when I painted or had this painted, I was not planning to have that painted green. That was supposed to be white. And that just got mixed up. And so when the painters paint upstairs, they were, they said that they would paint this white for me, but I'm kind of liking the green now. It's been growing on me. So let me know what you think. The reason I don't really like the green is because over in this corner, that just seems like a lot of green right there. I thought it would be better if this was white, but give me your opinion on that. And then the last thing in here is this really pretty vanity. I love this vanity. I think it's really cute and it just fits this room really well with the green. Now we do need to replace these three light fixtures because they are brushed nickel and the faucet 
is chrome and that is chrome and I'm not gonna replace that. So I think I want those light fixtures to either be chrome or matte black because the hardware on our doors is matte black and I don't want three different finishes in here. This is probably one of my favorite rooms and I think we're getting there, but I do need a little bit of input from you guys and then I'm not gonna take any of the tags like off this map or anything. And I'm gonna have Josh come in here and have him give me his opinion what he thinks before I take any tags off in case we want to kind of go in a little bit of a different direction. But my goal in here is for it to be all neutrals with things like shower curtains, mats, and then bring in some natural materials. Just tried a piece of broccoli and it's delicious. Josh's oatmeal is done. So good. I think I made up for last time, having it be too salty and not sweet enough. Just look how beautiful that looks. It smells so good that the peaches, the strawberry, the cinnamon. Mm. So what I like to do is let this cool and then I just package it up and then he's got breakfast for five days or so. Josh just texted me and told me he is on his way home. So what I'm gonna do is, because everything's done and ready, dinner's ready to go, I'm gonna take a second and I'm gonna relax for a good 20 minutes or so while I wait for him to get home and I'm gonna make myself a cup of tea. It is officially tea season around here. It's rained for the last week and a half and I couldn't be happier about it. I am so excited for everything to turn green again. I like to mix my teas, so I have two teas in here. If you guys have ever heard of an ember cup, let me tell you, Josh got this for me for my birthday, and it is, well, Josh actually got one for Christmas from his dad last year, and I wanted to steal it from him. It is a battery-powered heated mug. It will change your world. I can link it down below. They had them at Costco last time I was at Costco, but I can, they sell them on Amazon for the same price. And I was gonna steal his, but he ended up bringing it to work. So he bought me one for my birthday and it is amazing. And because it's tea season, this thing gets used all the time. I love it. You can actually set what temperature you want it to keep it at. And it's got a battery life of about an hour and a half. So I actually have two of these. The, the, they're the battery packs because, well now it doesn't really matter, but when I had an office upstairs and I was working in the kitchen, I wanted to have two so that I could always have it charging. Mm, my tea smells so good already, there's no water in it yet. And the little chargers are really affordable. So I had all intentions to sit down, but then I remembered I am responsible for making stuffing or dressing, however you like to call it. We don't actually stuff the bird for this weekend and I need some stale bread for it. So I thought right now would be a great time to get this bread going so I can bake it tomorrow and then I can have some nice stale bread for when I need to make my dressing. So I added, I'm just gonna make my no need bread recipe which is really, really easy. And I'm kind of not doing it in the right order because I was distracted. So I have, because I'm doing a double batch, I have three cups of water in here and one teaspoon of yeast. You all have seen me make this many, many times. It's so easy. I don't make it much during the summer. We were too busy with everything. But now that it's getting cooler outside, it's something I enjoy doing. Now we're gonna add salt. If you don't add salt to your bread, there is no flavor. And then I just need to add the flour, so it's that easy. So I added one cup already. Two. I need to add six and a half cups. And it doesn't have to be exact. Anything I can do today to make my tomorrow self a little less stressed is awesome. And by starting this, I know that I will have some bread that Josh can enjoy fresh tomorrow if he wants, and then I can cut it up into cubes and I'll let it just air dry and stale out for the stuffing. I'll just let this sit overnight and I'll bake that tomorrow. Josh just got home so the dogs are a little bit rambunctious and he's hungry so we are going to dish up dinner. I did have him take a look at what I did in the bathroom and he really likes it so that's good.
So Josh is willing to come in and give it a taste test, and I'm going to taste it at the same time. I haven't tasted it yet with the pasta and the crackers on top. So it's chicken tetrazzini, and I haven't made this in a long time. Tetrazzini? Tetrazzini. What is that? It's basically a chicken version of stroganoff. So it's got chicken and mushrooms and white wine. Sounds good. You got a little head start, don't you? I do. Mmm. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. It's really okay. good. Yeah. You might want to pop it in the microwave. It's, no, it's, it's perfect for you? It's plenty warm. Yeah. Awesome. It's steaming. Oh, good. Thank you. You're welcome. That is delicious. That's perfect for this, like, fall night because it's getting darker and it's just, it's a very comforting dish. And we have plenty for lunches and dinners. And I don't have to cook, other than I guess I need to bake that bread tomorrow. But other than that, I don't have to cook for a few days. So I'm excited about that. And then we'll be ready to cook a ton of stuff for Thanksgiving that we're celebrating early with Josh's family. So if you enjoyed this, I'd greatly appreciate a thumbs up. I can pop some more of my other videos you can go enjoy between now and my next upload. I want to say thank you for taking time out of your day to spend time with me. I greatly appreciate it. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye, friend.